Hello everybody and welcome to the School of Life with Sony. Well, I had taken a detour to just pause and reflect on all the things that were happening in my country and all the things that have been happening. Uh, when I did my last video, I did it a day after the very, very, very first protest and my heart was bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. By that time, we had eight people reported dead and I mean, it was unbelievable because I did not see this going there. As much as on like the previous night, I had that feeling, you know, the, the, the feeling that everybody had, you know, like what, what if this happens, what if this shedding of blood, but I do not think anyone had perceived the, you know, the shedding of blood to the level that blood has been shed. Nobody perceived um, loss, or loss of lives in the way that lives have been lost, like including a very, very young child. And nobody thought that there was going to be a lot of abductions. And right now uh, I know someone who is missing and um, a friend of a friend is missing. And, um, and we are praying that, they, that they'd be found. And um, we did not think that we were going to get to this level. <sighs> I had said in my previous video, honestly, I mean, a lot would have pre been prevented. There's just what would have been done to prevent the many things that have happened the very very many things that have, have happened would have been prevented if only if only <laughs> there was a bit of humanity in 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 one way or another if only there was a democracy if only there was uh, there was justice so i stand for social justice social justice is nothing political social justice is a god ministry social justice is a, is a god ministry social justice is about fairness it's about you know prom pro pro promotion of um, human dignity, promotion of um, human rights, equality. You know, it's about um, caring for the needy, caring for the uh, for the poor, asking for for equal distribution. I mean, I know there's not going to be equal distribution, but fairness. You know, fair fair distribution of wealth. And I am so excited that, that this generation, that this generation has been able to, to raise their voices and speak up and, you know, do the heartbeat of God. Let me, let me read for you, um, I'm going to read for you two scriptures, uh, Psalm 82 verse 3 and Isaiah. And uh, I just want to say that social justice is a God concern. God is really, really concerned um, with social justice. And um, I, in Psalm 82, 3 says, Defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Hmm. I'm going to read that again. Defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. Maintain the rights, the rights of the poor and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy deliver them from the hand of the wicked i'm so i mean i'm i'm sad and happy that um the people who stood up to do that are our children and the the, the people who have done that the people who who pioneered who pioneered this uh, movement were were our young people or our or our, our children i i say that because my three children are gen z i my eldest is 20 is, is gonna be 21 in a few so i mean like um so i i when i when i talk about about that with a lot of heaviness i'm like oh my god this is my child this is my child standing for the rights of the of the poor um isaiah one um i'm gonna read from 16b it says take your evil deeds out of my sight stop doing wrong learn to do right seek justice encourage the oppressed defend the cause of the fatherless plead the case of the widow i feel like, like that is what has been happening in um in kenya in this season and i i mean for me i i i'm like god give take kenya like just take kenya because i don't know where we're headed right now i don't know what is happening right now i mean like i don't know what is happening behind the scenes when we can see what is happening in the news but what is really what is what is happening we we might not be able to to do much humanly people have done what they can be able to do and now I'm like, you know what, God, take full, full control. Yeah, you have always taken control. You have, we have been asking you to take control, but I'm just asking, um, 
God, like, you know what, take control of every atrocity you've seen. God has seen. And may he, may he take full control. Because the Bible says, if, if my people who humble themselves and pray, or if my people humble themselves and pray, I will heal, I will hear them, and I will heal their land. And we are asking for healing in our land. And healing even in justice. You know, we want healing even in justice. <sighs> so, um... I have, I, have, I have felt responsible in the past over things gone wrong in Kenya. Um, so I, I, didn't, I didn't start raising my voice now. In 2013, I wrote a book called um, I Blame Myself. And that is why I will never keep quiet on anything at all. I stand for social justice for, uh, for like almost two decades, maybe four years short of two decades. I stood up or have stood up for the rights of, um, of young adult orphans. A generation I called a forgotten generation in the care of orphans and vulnerable children. And right now I know I am going towards domestic violence. I know right now I'm going towards I'm, I'm going towards in the ministry and pastors' wives and the oppression, you know, and the oppression. I know right now I'm going to um, I'm going towards um, co-parenting. Yes, and my voice is gonna be hard. Social justice is my heartbeat. Social justice is my heartbeat, and I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna keep quiet and 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 have self blame. You know, I'm never gonna keep quiet and say, I wish I. I said this. I wish I said this. So I will raise my voice because I believe in what Mahatma Gandhi says: be the change that you want to see. So in my own small way, I will forever be the change that I want to see, and that is my purpose in life. Honestly. I, mean, I, have, I have said so many times, like, social justice is my path. Social justice is my purpose. And I stand on the shoulders of all these people. You know, I stand on the shoulders of Wangari Mathai. I stand on the shoulders of um, Martin Luther King Jr. I stand on the, on the shoulders of Madiba Bandela. I stand on the shoulders of Tom Boyer. I stand on the shoulders of all these people who fought for, for freedom in my own small way. You know, whether I'm, I'm going to be seen or not, I have people that I'm following after. And so um, in, in 2013, I, I wrote a book uh, titled I Blame Myself. And if, if you look at this cover, the cover has um, like, it's fire. And this is Kenya burning, you know. And in my previous video, I had said like, Kenya is burning. And the people that are burning Kenya are our leaders, the, the leaders that we elected. And so what, the, the reason I wrote this book, um, I Blame Myself, is because I, I felt responsible uh, after the, after the post-election violence. I felt there's a part that I did not play by action or inaction. But most, most, um, most importantly was um, something that I knew I needed to do in 2005 when I started writing my book. My first book is called Can Scars Become Stars? And in that book, I had a chapter that I had written stop and pray for peace in kenya and as we were, we were coming to the to the end of the book uh to the end of um of the editing of the book in 2007 um like early in the in the year my editor was like you know what let's let's remove this um this part here because it's not it's it's, it's not flowing well with the story of your life and you can you, you can you can write it in a smaller book you know but of course i was not gonna do it that time so I, I post that because I had given I had given my story of experiencing uh, post-election violence in Bant Forest in 1992-1993. I don't know why I always get confused. Is it 92-93? Around there. So um, I felt like Kenyans did not understand how violence is like most of the Kenyans, especially in um, in Nairobi, in this in the in um in the urban you know in the urban areas. I know people in in the rural area, like people in Molo, people in Eldoret, those people had experienced war and they knew what that was. So I felt like it was my responsibility to shed light on that. So I did not do that. And I felt so responsible. That was the, that was the number one reason I wrote, I blame myself. But the number two reason I wrote this book, I blame myself. And uh, the, the, the writer line is uh, from ballots to bullet, to bullet. So um, the, the number two reason I, I said I, I blame myself is because I felt as um as an as an electorate you know someone who is a voter i have voted in people whom i, I should never have voted in i voted in people 
who represent you know every time we vote for someone you are you are voting yourself in you know when i vote for someone i'm i'm, I'm saying this person represents my ideologies this person who is who i'm, I'm inducting as a policy maker is representing me so whatever ideologies they're going to be bringing whatever policies they're going to be bringing these policies represent me you know so um so i felt responsible in that way and the other thing or the other the other the other, the other reason why i said i blame myself was because i um i felt like in one way or another we all have because i should have said i blame you i, I mean anytime anytime when i'm pointing fingers at everybody else then all these other fingers are pointing at me so i'm like i blame myself i wouldn't say i have been tribal i don't i don't um but i'm not you know i'm not saying I'm, I'm innocent but i'm saying i'm not tribal in what i'm gonna say like um i said so many times you've employed a house girl or um you know whoever you have employed in your in your uh, in your company by their last name you look at their last name and you're like okay i'm not gonna take you because of your last name i'm not gonna employ you because i'm not gonna hang out with you because so we judge people by their last names so that is why i was saying like in one way or another we have all instigated tribalism and that time it was tribal thankfully now it's not it's not tribal in his endorsement of this book in 2011 professor p elo lumumba writes Salvaged as we were from the jaws of death, we must now, like the fabled phoenix, rise from the ashes of ethnicity and hatred through renewed self-reflection. In this book, Sonny remembers the pain that post-election violence visited on the people of Kenya and asks the question that many fear to answer. What was my role? Without drowning us in a sea of self-pity, Sony reminds us that the long-term health of Kenya requires every citizen to rise from the armchair of analysis to play a positive role in ensuring that peace and harmony is preserved for posterity. So um, I had I had um, I had I had put pictures in this book of like Kenya of Kenya burning. You know I had this is like what is happening uh like right now in kenya you know the uh, all this you know all these things all these things um so i had put pictures and this is the picture this is what i wanna i wanna i wanna mention a bit you see like i put all these pictures strategically um all these pictures are courtesy of bonifas mwangi thank you boni um so i put all these pictures and i put one picture down here because this is what was happening and i'm going to read for you a portion of a portion of that so while we were all fighting the leaders were taking what i don't know if this, this can be seen clearly maybe i'm going to take a nice a, a nice picture of that so we were all fighting but um the leaders were taking the leaders we were fighting for were taking coffee and tea together and i said i said in one i said in one part um i said in one part what what uh rafael tuju said this is what rafael tuju said i'm gonna read from i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna read here here is the answer of what, what was the question let me read from the question science fiction author robert Heinlein noted anyone who wants to become a politician shouldn't be allowed to be one question have Kenyan leaders been exercising power over Wananchi or have they been demonst demonstrating the virtues of good leadership? So here is the answer. In 2007, our leaders failed when they put themselves first at the expense of the electorate. The question is, how many politician, political leaders in Kenya lost loved ones? How many, went, how many were left homeless? How many traveled the road that the civilians took? I still remember listening to Rafael Tuju, who was, who was at that time an aspirant of the Rarieda parliamentary seat. He said, I and Ruto <laughs> are neighbors in, Kar in Karen. Our children are not fighting and we are not killing each other. If Mr. Tuju whereabouts at that time of the post-election violence is anything to go by, our leaders were undoubtedly safe. And isn't it the same thing that has been happening now? When we are fighting, when we are fighting for our rights together, like together as one, 
where are our, where are our leaders' children? Where are they? Who is suffering here? Who is who has been suffering here? You know, um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with this. Um, Wale Soyinka, who is a playwright, a Nigerian uh, playwright, had written excessively about uh, about the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo and had given a story on um, Mobutu Seseko, and um, who was referred to as a Todd King. He lived in splendor while his country suffered from dire poverty. And it is noted that he had a personal fortune of 10 thousand oh my god ten thousand oh my god i'm saying ten thousand he had a, a personal fortune of usd 10 billion 10 billion usd to himself and for himself and also he stole an entire gold mine kilomoto which covers 32,000 square miles that is how selfish some African leaders can be. So you've stolen 32,000 square miles of gold. You have by yourself or for yourself 10, this figure is so big for me to even read, 10 billion USD. You, oh my God, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. While your countrymen are dying in poverty. There's also Malawi's um, Hastings, Kamuzu, Banda. There's Russians, Joseph Stalin. There's Iraq, Saddam Hussein. There is Libya's slain ruler, um, Gaddafi. We know Gaddafi. They all exemplify the, um, like th that kind of rulership, you know, that, that kind of rulership that, um, that holds on to power in a disastrous way, you know. Um, they say that if you want to test a man's character, give him power give him power if you want to test a man's character give him power so where are we with our leadership and what's our corporate mandate our corporate mandate will come into in 2000 right now we have we, we we are all together and we are fighting in unison but our corporate mandate i feel like i feel like kenya i feel like Afri, in africa kenya is setting uh, some 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 sort of precedent and i had said here that we must start off by appreciating that we have a major mandate within the East and Central African region, that is us as Kenyans. Our geographical placement is not only strategic, but is God-given. And I'm aware that I sound largely Christian, and well, this is true. Our destinies, individual and geographical, are mapped out by God. Reason why Kenya is kind of now, I mean, so many African nations are looking at Kenya right now. Um, our destinies, individual and geographical, are mapped out by God. God very well knew, since the dateless past, that there would be a country called Kenya. He designed her, her peculiarities. And I come from the school of thought that subscribes to the theory of creation. So I know that we are not Kenyans by accident, but by design, and that is God's design. Geographically, we are placed to be the entryway to other surrounding nations. This in itself empowers us economically. We are able to make revenue as well as attract international investors who hold many countries in our hands. Yeah, they meet in our cities to forge treaties and to behold the wonders of our bustling wildlife reserves. So not only are we mentors, but we are also richly endowed with beauty. Our very own Masai Mara has been declared the eighth wonder of the world which adds volume to our uh, to our tourism portfolio. So I pray for Kenya. I pray that um, that our country will stop burning. I pray that um, our leadership is going to is going to become better, but we are the ones to uh, to better our leadership. And I've said when it comes to leadership that I blame myself for poor leadership in Kenya. And as I write about our leaders and their leadership, I pause and reflect and ask myself, what part have I played in Kenya's leadership? For a moment, I switch from blaming our leaders and ask myself, who elects these leaders? Who re-elects those who have failed in the past? I suspend the blame, game, the blame game and redirect the pointing finger to myself. Since 2002, I have taken part in Kenya's poor leadership and I go on to, I mean, to explain why I am blaming myself. I mean, there's personal impunity, you know. Uh, 
so let me just read the last the last the very last part on um on leadership versus power uh leadership is influence not force leadership is integrity not compromise leadership is coexisting not intolerance and whilst power in and whilst power in and of itself is not a bad thing leadership is not necessarily synonymous with power a leader influences people's choices whereas a leader inspires confidence power driven rulers depend mm, whereas a leader inspires confidence power driven rulers demand to be followed by stirring up fear should i repeat that whereas leader, leader whereas a leader inspires confidence power driven rulers this leadership and rulership we want leadership not really rulership power driven rulers demand to be followed by stirring up fear a good leader motivate motivates followers to pull together towards a common goal a tyrant will bully and coerce to get to get one's way a good leader never violates the rights of other people leadership at its best take it takes into account the diverse values of all wananchi a good leader respects his or her subjects yes god bless kenya god bless kenya's leadership and I pray that we uh, we shall forge forward uh, positively, peace and justice being a a shield and defender. Is that what it says? Yeah, I mean, if we don't have, if you don't know how to pray for our nation, the 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 very first um, line of one of our national anthem is a, is an amazing prayer, and I pray that God is going to bless our country and um, God is going to help us um in all that we do check out mm -hmm.